Hey guys, it's Liam from Killer Inc here, and today I have the pleasure to welcome Paul Talbot to the studio. Hi guys. So today we're going to be explaining the setup and usage of the Brother Printer series. So Paul, as a tattoo artist, I'm looking through the website and I can see various Brother Printers available. Uh, wh which one do I choose? It really depends on how you're going to use the printer as an artist and what the setup the printer is going to live in. Okay. So there are three printers. We're currently on the 700 series, so all the printers start with 7. So there's a 723, a 773, and a 763. They all have slightly different features, so I'm going to run you through each one one at a time. Okay, great. So we'll start with the 723, which we'll call the base model. Right? This model only has a USB connection. So it's only got the USB connection on the side. I use one of these on the road all the time. When I used to use a laptop and take it with me, I'd just plug this in, in from my laptop, straight into it, print my stencils out. You could use this if you've got a small studio, maybe you've got a little private studio, a couple of guys tattooing together. You could just hand the thing backwards and forwards and plug it into your laptops and stuff if you want to do that. The next one, so the 773, the only difference between the 773 and the 723 is that the 773 has Wi-Fi. So if you compare the two, there's just one extra little thing there. It still has the USB connection, so okay. you can still connect direct into it from your computer or your tower, your Mac or your PC. All these uh, devices are Mac and PC compatible, and the installation procedure is, is pretty much exactly the same whether you're on a Mac or PC, so you won't have to worry about that. But if you've got a bunch of guys, say, in the studio, that all want to connect to the printer, then I would suggest using this one and connecting it to your wireless network. Once this exists on your Wi-Fi network, everybody in your studio, so if you've got a studio like mine, we've got seven guys with various devices that all need to print throughout the day. Okay. This just sits in the middle of our studio on, everybody can just print straight to that. Just like a central yeah. hub. If you don't set it up on a Wi-Fi network, out the box, if you turn it on, hit the, the Wi-Fi button here, this creates its own Wi-Fi hotspot. It won't get you on the internet, it can't do that. But what you can do is create what we call a peer-to-peer -peer connection wirelessly to this computer. This And this will work with an iPad or your Wi-Fi laptop ah, that was or going computer. To be one of the questions, yeah. So you can see this, so we'll fire this up in a minute and we'll, we'll show you how this appears on your Wi-Fi for your iPad. Um, so that gives you an option that if you did want to take it away with you. So maybe you use your computer when you're in your studio, yeah. but when you go on the road, you take your iPad or your tablet PC or something like that, and you still want to take your printer, but you don't want to take your computer, you could use it that way. So you could just fire it up, cre create its own Wi-Fi hotspot, and then you can connect to it from whatever your mobile device is. So it does offer you that option. The password for it is always really easy in case you're watching this trying to figure out what the default password is. The default password is always 773, which is the number of the printer, and it's the last five digits of the serial number. It's on, that sticker on the back. I'm just going to make sure you can see that. So it's those last five digits. So whatever your printer is, that's going to be the Wi-Fi hotspot that it creates. All right, so that's the 773. And so then the final model is the 763 MFI. The MFI okay. bit stands for Made for iOS, which should bode made well for, for what iOS. we're about to do. Made for iOS. I'll just get that So off. it should work with your iPhone and your iPad. Right, and so now we've got the three. So we've got the 723 USB only, 773 USB and Wi-Fi, and the 723 Made for iOS is the one that's got USB and Bluetooth. I think this is the preferred way of connecting to these printers, particularly now that I see so many tattooists moving over to using tablet PCs and iPads and stuff like that. Oh yeah, just um, if you're thinking, made for iOS does not mean that you can't connect via Android, it will connect via Android as well. And actually the 763, is the one that I tell everybody, if you're not sure which one to buy, buy the 763. By default, the 763. Yeah, because you've got the USB connection if you want to connect up to a computer. Yeah. But then if you haven't got an iPad, but you're thinking about getting one, well, if your laptop's got Bluetooth in it, you can connect via Bluetooth to it as well. That's pretty cool. So it's, it is it is it is a cool bit of kit, and that's the one that I recommend for, for all tattooists. Unless, 
like I say, like me, you've got one of these sitting in the studio because you've got seven artists that all need it. I mean, could, so excuse me, dropping it. This one will be available later from my eBay now that it's damaged. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you could, you could have everybody connect to this via Bluetooth as well. You could just leave it in the middle of the room and everybody could use the Bluetooth connection. So oh, you, you, could, you could use that one in the same way that I use this one. And one of the benefits that this gives you is that you can change all of your print settings on the fly when you connect via Bluetooth. Sometimes when you connect via Wi-Fi, depending on how you connect, and I'll explain that in a little bit more depth when we go over it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes depending on how you connect to this printer via Wi-Fi, the settings, um, you can't change them on the fly in certain environments. It's a right. limitation, I believe, of the air print driver. So it's, I find it slightly more problematic sometimes. So that's why I tell everybody, realistically, if you're not sure, get the 763, because it'll do everything that you need it to do. Perfect. And that's the models. Paul, when you're creating stencils, do you exclusively use Brother printers? Yeah, absolutely. I just use, I don't, I, I just, I don't think uh, anything else worked for me at all. Even when I, when I came to it and when, you know, I want to make these graphic tattoos, what was on the market then? That didn't, it, there was nothing that would work. So like the, the regular Thermofax doesn't work for me. So I, I was looking for something that was print resolution because the problem with, that I have with those devices is that they're only about 150 DPI. So you imagine some of those digital textures that I put on my tattoos and everything. Yes. Yeah. You run them through a Thermofax and they just lose so much definition that it, it was just no good as a, st as a stencil for me. So initially, I used to have to hand stencil the designs, you know, it would take me like three hours to make a hand stencil. And I thought, oh, this has just got to stop. Hmm. So when I bought it, it was literally the first thing on Google when I put in thermal printer, this was the first thing that came up. So I bought one, okay. um, used it, and, and, and since then, because you know if you've ever watched me tattooing, that I regularly, yeah. throughout the day, I'll do four or five stencils because I, I kind of build them in layers. So for me, this has been an absolute godsend. I just run them all out, you know, and because it's so small, when you do as much traveling as I used to, certainly when I was, you know, doing 20 shows a year, having your own stencil printer in your bag, anybody who's ever stood in a two hour queue waiting for a Thermofax to call down will, will tell you that. I've they, seen them <laughs> pretty far. The queue and everybody coming back sad because it's blown up and the ball was blown or something. So this just made life so much easier. And so, yeah, now for me, exclusively, unless for some reason I'm, I'm like free-handing something on, which happens very rarely, but if I'm making a stencil, I'm making a stencil with one of these. Great. What are the benefits of using Brother printers compared to hand stencils? The first benefit, I think, when you've got something that you can repeat for a tattooist. You know, if you make a hand stencil, it's a one-of-one one copy, right? Mm-hmm. So if, I, if I've spent two hours putting a hand stencil together, imagine we're filling this gap with a, you know, a crazy pattern. I spent two hours making the stencil, I go to put it on and you sneeze. It's happened to me more times than I care <laughs> to remember, right? You sneeze, you move, or I slip and I double tap that stencil, right? If that's the only copy of that stencil, I'm finished, right? It's, I've got to start again, or again. worse, if, if I'm a bit pushed for time, I'm going to have to use that slightly blurry stencil and make a compromise. Now, if even before you've started tattooing, you've already made your first compromise of the day, that ain't going to be a good day at the office, is it? Because that stencil is no. going to be a pain in the arse all day. <laughs> so you, what I loved about this was I could take something like one of my designs and like if you if you if you draw traditional tattoos even, you know, if you're drawing stuff that looks like this, yep. you can take those designs, scan them into your computer, take them to a show or take them to your guest spot or just take them to work in the morning and you can make as many stencils as you need to make. And now with the benefit of things like the tablet PCs and iPads, you can actually just draw the thing into an iPad and leave it in the library and just print them as you need them. And I think that's the biggest benefit is just being able to Having repeat it available. and be consistent. You know, you get halfway through a, a tattoo and this has happened to me before now, particularly if you're working in like realism, mm -hmm. Days getting late, customers getting slightly hot and bothered, stencils starting to feel a little bit soft, and you think, I'm going to have to re stencil the top half of it, or you've been working in a load of detail, and now you realise, I've lost the eyelashes, I've lost the eye, I'm going to have to re stencil it. 
Well, if, if I've got to take that blurred thing that's had a load of fluid all over it that's been sitting around for four hours, that's going to be a terrible stencil to work off. With this, I can just run another stencil out. I could do that with the Thermofax, but it's it's just a lot more convenient to just have this. It's, it's in my tattoo station. Just hit print and away I go. I've got one sitting there. And you're already there. And away you go. Great. I think it's other big benefit is the resolution. Now, resolution for tattooists is probably something that you that you've not heard of. So it's measured in a thing called dots per inch. So if you look at, say, a printed magazine that's got three, in every inch of paper, there are 300 dots. And it takes about 300 dots in an inch to make our eyes believe that that is a real image, right? Which means you've got a very, very high resolution stencil. Whereas something like a Thermofax or one of the other options it's a very low resolution stencil. It's it's a hundred to hundred and fifty dots per inch, so it's half as good. Any tattooist will tell you the more detail you've got, the more detail you can copy. And for me, it was more like digital textures, weird kind of grunged out letters and little bits of like bad printouts. It's another you know, kind of weird nonsense that I tattoo. <laughs> well, that doesn't. If you put that through a photocopier, right? It is weird nonsense, but I love it, right? So, but if you put that through. A photocopier, you lose so much resolution that you can't get close to what what you're looking at, you know. And that's, I think, that's maybe where I'm kind of similar to realists in in that respect. Is that I'm I'm doing a realistic portrait of the letter E badly printed, you know. That's that's the difference. But I want to get yeah. as close to it as they do. But if I'm already losing half the resolution that I've drawn in my stencil before I even start, I've already lost half the detail. So for me, it was the 300 DPI print quality as well is a massive benefit over the stuff that we've got. Realistically, this is from now, and the stuff that we that we did have, like the Thermofax, that's it's not like 1970s technology. You know, eventually we do have to move on, and I just think these are the, the ideal thing. We've moved on. We've moved on, <laughs> <laughs> and moving on. Can the brother printers be used just like a Thermofax? The simple answer is no, they can't. So the one benefit that you have with a Thermofax is if you like to draw on paper, and a lot of artists still do like to do everything quite manually, they like to use paper and everything, draw it out, you know, and then feed it through the Thermofax. The Thermofax works like a copier. So if you've never seen one, um, you take your piece of artwork, you put it in a carrier with the thermal paper, you run it through, a light bulb comes on and it exposes expose it to heat that's not how these guys work so if that's how you work you could buy one of these and still use it but you'd have to buy the scanner because they actually make a scanner that goes with it and you can you can connect the two together so that you oh, can great. scan through and then print on the brother printer if you if you really wanted to do that so if you were looking to buy one of these to replace a thermofax you'd want to buy the scanner as well and this and so right. in, but instead of doing it in one object what you're going to do is you're going to scan the the document in and then print it out from a different printer but yeah you could with an with an extra bit of kit you could make them work like a thermofax but they out the box like this they don't work as a thermofax if an artist finds an image online and just simply wants to print it off on one of these printers uh, can they do that yeah yeah you can do it you probably need to make some adjustments to the image, like you would with any image to get it to print. Like if you mm -hmm. if you imagine if you're putting it through a, a traditional thermofax or something, you'd have to make adjustments to the image. You know, if you just want to take an image off the internet and run it straight out, you can. I'm not sure why you would want to, if I'm absolutely honest with you. Um, I've seen a lot of people kind of printing out images like that. The theory being that if you've got, a, and these can do it, if you've got, a, f a full resolution copy of the image as a stencil on the skin, then you'll get a better result. Personally, I don't think that's quite how it works. What because what nobody takes into consideration is yes, the print the paper can take it, so you can print an image onto the paper. The printers can print the image with a little bit with a little bit of fiddling here and there, you know, dark values and light values. But the stencil fluid, and there are a lot of them and I haven't found one that will hold that amount of purple on the skin for six hours, because this is gonna be something realistic. So this is gonna be a portrait, say. So okay. you're gonna be there for a few hours, and 
you're, you're going to be wiping and wiping and, and you're and introducing fluids and Vaseline or whatever it is that you're using. And that whole thing is going to turn into slowly a purple, greasy mess. Because the other thing that you've got to remember is even though you've cleaned the skin down, mm -hmm. you've wiped it off with alcohol, that happened five hours ago. The, the skin's natural oils and greases, we all know it as tattooists, they start coming back through and, you know, you get eight hours into a, into a tattoo, the stencil's not nearly as solid. And we all know that that happens. I mean, we'd be asking for the, the earth from stencil fluid companies to make that hold forever. You know what I mean? It won't, it just won't. So we've got a window of opportunity. Now, if you've, okay. if you've got like, you know, like a traditional, what I call a realism map, you know, you see realistic artists, they'll, they'll put a, put a thing down, you know, a picture, and they'll draw over the top of it. They make like a reference map. They run that out as a stencil. These days, if I make those, I make them on my iPad. I just make a new layer in, in my document, uh, so just draw right. over the top, and then I remove the artwork from underneath, and then I print that out as a stencil. Okay. I think that's a better way of working. The, the appeal of getting a picture straight off the internet, just hitting print and it coming out, is that you're tattooing really quickly. You're saving time. But what you're actually going to do is, yes, you will. Say you save an hour at the beginning of the tattoo. Getting that, there it is. You're going to lose that hour having to continually, carefully wipe around. Oh, I can't touch that. It's got a bit it's soft. Very delicate. And then you, yeah. you've got, you've got no. You're going to have to keep referencing and like, oh god, it's all blurry now. And and then then you've got the panic. No tattooist likes to get the fear in the middle of a tattoo. You, that's the last thing that you want to happen. And you yeah. start seeing, you know, you're doing the, the lips of a, a face. And you, you're watching the eye blur out, and the you know all the hairs disappear. That is oh, not no. a nice feeling, and there's nothing you can do. So, whereas it can, I, I honestly think you've got to ask yourself the question: Would it be worth putting a little bit more effort in to make a traditional tattoo stencil and save the time throughout, you know, throughout the tattoo, you know, because we're asking too much of the of the fluids at this point. So you're just going to end up with a messy purple arm. So, yeah, you can, but don't do it, please. It's just going to be the worst day at the office, mate. <laughs> do you have to use spirit paper or can you use any other brand? No, you can use any brand of thermal paper. You can't use carbon paper, right? No, no hand draw. No, no hand yeah, draw, no because hand draw. anything that's designed for hand drawing is a, an impact paper. It has to feel impact or pressure. These don't do impact and pressure, right? So it's not like it's a dot matrix printer. So as long as the paper that you're buying is designed for thermal printers. And there's a bunch of them on the market. I know Spirit is is probably the most popular out there. It's the one that's kind of ubiquitous around the world of tattooing, but you do see other ones. Um, some of the other ones that I've seen, like the Killer Ink paper, I actually prefer for some stencils because the oh, paper right, okay. is slightly thicker. So it's, um, again, if, you're not, if you've never seen Spirit paper, let me just grab one of these out. So the spirit paper, like all thermal paper, it's, it's, it's a, you know, a three or four part piece of paper like this. What I like about the killer ink paper, this top sheet is slightly thicker, this, this bit of paper here. So when you, um, when you come to making your stencil, I actually think in certain instances, I get a better stencil off the killer ink paper. Right. Which is slightly cheaper. You know, but to be honest with you, I love both of them and I use them for different applications. You know, I'm a really fussy with things like paper. This is really good if I've got to get in a shoulder trap and I, and I need to wrap need it around. A bit more easy to, yeah, to stuff ride. like that. Where if you're bending around an elbow or something like that, brilliant. The the killer ink paper is a bit heavy for that, but um, but sometimes if I'm putting something down where I'm putting a lot of purple into the stencil, maybe I've got you know because I like when I make stencils. I like to have all of the kind of details, like so the eye, the nostrils and the mouth, if I'm doing a face, I like to have those details actually there printed. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll use just the black values on a stencil. Sometimes it's a little bit heavy for this paper and I find the, the killer ink paper, it copes with it a little bit more and it works a little bit better. So okay. it's always worth having a box of it in the shop, just in case, you know what I mean? I can use any brand I want yep. in the pre-cut sheets. Yeah. Can I use the spirit roll? No. <laughs> no. Okay. No. Again, I'm going to have to show you how it works, right? So there is, if you've looked on the internet, you'll find that with these printers, there's a thing called a roller case that comes with it. It's a great looking bit of kit. It's really good. And I thought, brilliant. What I'll do, 
And probably like a lot of tattooists, I thought, what I'll do is I'll get the roller case for my Wi-Fi model that sits in the shop. I'll put the roll in, and then it'll just everybody will just be able to hit print. They won't have to worry about keep loading it with paper. This would be brilliant. The problem is that when you get this paper, this is the sheet that we want to, for it to be our stencil. This flimsy sheet here is, is the stuff that's got the actual hectograph ink on it, right? So this, this bit needs to transfer onto this bit. This is literally here to protect that sheet of paper. But on the roll, it's still there, like that. So what you'd have to do is, you, to get it in the roller case, you'd have to unroll the entire roll. And this thing's like, oh, right. it's like 10 meters long or something. You'd have to roll it all out, carefully take out, a, you know, like a five or 10 meter long piece of this paper and then carefully roll it all back up and put it in the roller case. Um, I don't know about you, but the chances of me getting that right, I think are pretty slim. So. I, I would say no, unless you really, really like having boring, mundane tasks. We could always speak to Spirit and ask them to take that piece of paper out before they roll it up, might be a bit easier. But for now, no, we can't use the rolls. Okay, so now we've gone through the likes of the paper that you can use. Yep. So obviously you're feeding it through. Yep. There is going to be some form of carbon buildup. Yes. So what would you recommend to clean these printers? Okay, so I use uh, alcohol for the print head and I use soap and water. It's normally just a bit of soap and water out of my wash bit bottle. Of soap and water. So just out of my wash bottle, to be honest with you. So let me open up this, this printer. I'll just put these out of the way for a second. So the front of the printer opens up, right? Like this. So, that, so you can see, I'm just going to hold it that way so that we can all see. There's a roller at the front. This holds the paper, and it, it actually, this is the motorized bit. It's the bit that pushes the, the paper through. A lot of people think that this little metal strip here is the printhead, including me, until I checked with the people at Brother who actually informed me. You can't, what it is, you can just about see it in there. Between this piece of plastic and the roller, there is a, there's a printhead. That's where you get a little bit of carbon buildup. The, the, the thing about this printer is, it, and I think this is an important point, none of these printers were designed to print onto this paper, right? They were designed to print onto fax roll. So if you think that, just so happens that I've got, it's like Blue Peter this is, here's someone <laughs> prepared earlier. So this is this is fax roll. As you can see, it doesn't have any purple, it doesn't shed anything, right? You just print onto it, it's thermal paper, just like an old fax machine paper, you know. But this prints out to thermal paper, right? Okay. One of the pro well, two of the problems. One of them is that, as you can feel, this you paper can see the density. Yeah. it's considerably thicker than the paper we're trying to print to. It's you know that's like tissue paper versus you know sort of newspaper weight, isn't it? You know, so so that's one of the problems that you run into, and that's one of the, the problems where we get the jamming issues and things like that. Um, but also because this has got that this purple sheet underneath it as you print to this and you can see it as I'm touching it I've, we're already not marked it with fingerprints we've only touched it a couple of times any if you're a tattooist you know exactly what I'm talking about the purple you, you stain of look death at look yeah. at it and it will yeah. jump onto you so what happens as you print through these little bits of this come off and they go into the printer it doesn't actually do the printer any harm I've got a 763 at home that I've been using for 10 years that I've never cleaned. Wow. I've never cleaned it once, never bothered. Um, because th the great thing about these things is they're pretty bulletproof in terms of breakdown. They don't really break down. You don't really have to service them. If you do for any reason, I think this normally where this comes in is early on when people get the printers and they, there's a bit of a learning curve and there's a learning curve to everything, but there is a bit of a learning curve to using the printers. That's why we're making this video to hopefully help you know avoid some of the, the, the things that I had to learn the tough way. What you might do is you might print to it, maybe get the paper in wrong and it, and it wraps around the rollers and then you make a bit of a mess having to yank it all out and get rid of it. And normally I, I think it's when you first get the printer that you get like little bits of purple sticking around in, in there. If you get like little bits of purple sitting on the print head, it can sometimes create you know, little blobs on the print out and stuff like that. And sometimes if it's got a lot of build up, like our 773 in the shop, we probably clean that 
twice a year, but you've got seven artists printing to it every day of the week, you know, so, because... So that's quite a bit. Yeah, of a when, you, when you kind of add everybody up, the studio's open seven days a week, really, so it really adds up. If you're using it on your own, like my 623 that I've got, I've never, like I said, I've never cleaned that for 10 years, but it's only me that's ever printed to it, you see. So if you do need to clean it, this is the process that I go through. I'll take one of our little alcohol swabs. If you haven't got any of them, nick them off your piercer. There's no need to buy them. So I take the little alcohol swab. See, you can see it's already all over my fingers. And then we open up this. And what I do, so I slide this alcohol swab underneath the, the roller, right? And then feed it in like that and then all I'll do is I'll just run it backwards and forwards and you can see that it's underneath that bit of plastic there and I'll just run that backwards and forwards through the print head you know now the reason I do that with the alcohol is it'll fetch, fetch it off the print head or any sort of marks it's really just picking up excess you know what I mean but you don't really want to get alcohol on this rubber roller because rubber will perish over time so if you keep cleaning this down with like something harsh like alcohol this could go brittle. It'll, it'll I'm, dry up and crack. Honestly, yeah. I mean, honestly, I'm not sure of what type, whether it's a, a rubber or a composite. I don't know if it's subject to that, but I think it's, you know, safety first, right? Or just think about the longevity of your printer. And I just, so what I'll normally do then is I take my wash bottle, spray a bit onto, you know, the, the your paper towel, and then just wipe that, just clean the roller off. Wear gloves because you will get covered in all this purple nonsense as ever. And that's it, but you don't need to clean it. Realistically, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Don't worry about cleaning it unless you're experiencing problems because there's there's really very little that goes wrong in them. That's one of the lovely things about them. You can kind of, you know, I'm pretty confident in saying you, you'd have to go some distance to, to hurt one of these. Clean it if you've got a problem. Don't worry about it if you haven't. There's nothing to worry about with them. So are there any tips and tricks that you'd uh, recommend? Yeah, so one, right, so one of my favorite, this is one of my favorite ones, right? So if you own one or you're thinking of getting one or your mate's got one, you'll see people, they'll hit print on the old iPad and then you see them, they go, oh, get it in straight, get it in, get it in, get it in, and then like that. And it's, you know, it's like the brother jiggle, right? The simple trick, right, is this, don't send the document to the printer until you've set the paper up. Now, I do need some power. And I'm going to show you that this is one of my favorite sort of top tips. So you've got your printer and normally your data light is on because you've sent it. And then the moment you do that, it's going to grab it and start printing it. Um, and then, and that's how you see, um, and that's how you see people, they get the, the print in a little bit squint. And by the time you get there, it's chewing up the corner of the paper. The trick is don't send anything to print, drop this in the printer right it, it'll grab it like that you'll hear it now that the button that most people ignore is there's a little document button just there it's just underneath the power button and that's the, it's in the same place on every printer so don't press the button for too long otherwise it's going to feed it all the way through so let me let me walk you through this process so you put your bit of paper in you've heard it go eh, and it's grabbed it right then what i like to do is just press the button a couple of times until the paper is actually sticking out the printer right now at this point, if your paper's sticking out like that, you're thinking, oh, I'm going to have to start again, right? Well, as you've seen, what I do is all you've got to do is lift up the front flap. You can actually use the roller to to line up, you know, so you, so you can use the, line, the roller as use a guide. As a reference, use yeah. that as a straight edge if you want. Get that thing, and then, you know, like if you're over to one side too much, if you're right up against it and you're worried, you can centre up the paper, get it exactly where you want it, drop that down and now you send the document to print and it'll always print perfect and straight and a lot of people just forget to do that they just think they can't lift that up which is it's dead easy you just kind of lift it up and kind of straighten it up however you want you know what i mean and there you go so that's one of my tips brilliant okay and so now that we've covered the likes of the setup and usage i'd like to talk a little bit about troubleshooting yeah these are frequently asked questions that we get, whether it be email, phone call, even social media. During printing, it'll come through and it's faint. Yeah. What would be the best way to troubleshoot that? The first thing to check is make sure you've taken that sheet of paper off. Ah, <laughs> so yeah. that, that, is, that is one of the things. I've actually had somebody, uh, somebody do that, couldn't understand why his, his, his thing was printing faint and he hadn't taken this 
piece of paper off. Said so check that first. Now I'm going to presume that most of you of you have done that. So once you, with that off, and it's printing a little bit faint, so that let's have a look at this as we would have it presented to go to the printer. There you go. So we've got we're getting a faint print. So the printer has a couple of options. So the first one being density, right? So if you think of density as heat, density is how hard it will print to the printer, how hot it will get. So if you've got a very light printout and uh, you want to make it darker, crank the density up a little bit and it will make it it'll make it darker. The other thing that I've that that is worth saying, if you work on say uh, Photoshop or um, like a um, like a Procreate is really popular with tattooists, and you're drawing, make sure that the the drawing that you do that the lines are absolutely black because the printer has to make a decision when it prints about what is black and what is not black, right? So okay, if you do your whole design with a grey pencil and just sit there sketching and you don't put a black line in or make it black in your software, the printer is looking at it going, yeah, maybe that's not black. And so it will print it lighter and lighter because the printer's having okay. to make a decision. It's much better, just like with the traditional Thermofax, if your stencil, as much as possible, is solid black or white. Simple as that. So to keep it as black and white as you possibly can. It's only when you start getting into fades and stuff like that that you start getting light prints. That's one of the, the favorite things that people make a, a mistake of. Or that, because you can zoom in, it's one of the things that's coming up a lot lately. Because you can zoom in so far on something like Procreate or Affinity or something, people use much thinner lines to draw. So when they zoom okay, out to yeah. A4, the line is half a pixel. Well, you know, everything's got a limitation. I mean, come on. And you have to make the lines a bit thicker. It's, it's really, look, look at what's printing faint. Is the whole thing faint? Because if the whole thing's faint, then you probably just need to increase density across the, the whole thing. If some of the areas are printing fine, but some of the lines aren't printing properly, then those lines need to be a little bit thicker or you need to make sure they're absolutely black. You know, I only find that this printer will struggle with line work when it gets super, super fine, you know, you know, technical pencil, really gray. Detail, yeah, really. Details. You can always make it a little bit thicker. Just uh, put an, a stroke on it in Photoshop, you know, just stroke the edge of your lines and away you go. And so that, that's that's how I cope with faint printouts. Next up. Yeah. Okay, so got everything now, prints fine. Yep. And go to put it through the paper creases. <laughs> <laughs> so Horror. we covered a little bit on it before and ensure yeah, that it's straight. Yeah. So are there any other pointers to help prevent okay. the creasing? So preventing creasing, I think the first thing is to look at the mechanics of how it how this works. So you've got a long, thin print head across there. As, as it's reading the image, that print head is lighting up and getting hot. So I find where creasing tends to happen is when you've got parallel lines across the page like this. Now it doesn't have to be a straight line. If you take something like a, fa a flare of life pattern, every time there's like a, re a repeated joint, every time it crosses over, then the printer is lighting up all the way across the print head. Now, I don't know if this is definitely how it works, but this is my presumption of how it works because it, it supports my theory of why the paper sometimes jams. So I find that if if there's something across the page like that, it can catch because it, the whole print head gets really hot really quickly. Yeah, like a speed bump. Yeah, yeah. like that. And, it, and you, 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 you'll you sometimes see it when it's coming out, it, 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 like this. All that that is, it's just getting a little bit hot across. So one way of doing it, if you've got a lot of parallel lines like this, is to literally just rotate your artwork by one degree. And then the lines are actually running like that. So now when the printer looks at it like that, it's not looking at a straight line. It's just, and I'll print out a full page of Flower of Life patterns in a minute and we'll show you what I mean. That really helps stop the catching. Also, the top corners, If I find that if you've got a dark part of an image at both ends of there, Obviously, the whole print head lights up at the beginning of the stencil, and it hasn't had time to sort of start feeding, and that's what will crinkle it as well. Right. And and so it's it's just little things like that, you know, just like little tips for you know, rotate your artwork a little bit, 
make sure it's not dead straight on the page, make sure it's off a little bit. You're going to cut it out anyway. It doesn't need to be straight on the page, does it? You know what I mean? And um, and that'll help the printer out because it's just a long, thin strip of print head. And that is what seems to do it. I just think the paper, if you just... Imagine if we just got a bit of hot wire now and just put that onto that bit of paper, it would, it would crinkle all up. And that's effectively what we're doing. You What's know what happened? I mean? Right. Yeah, it just gets a little bit hot right across the stencil. If it's only over here, it won't do it. You know, if it's only one bit, that's why it, it, it prints some stencils perfectly. And they go, why didn't it print that one? It's like, it's because it doesn't suit the geometry of it. So just twist it a little just bit. Just a slight alternate. Yeah, just a slight turn and away you go. I mean, it's the same with traditional designs as well, where you've got like, anywhere where you've got those parallel lines in your design, you know, like if you've done a basket pattern or something like that, those lines are going to be parallel. If it's really big, you want to just twist it a little bit and it'll be absolutely fine. Great. Lastly, at the troubleshooting. Yep. A print through. Yeah. And there's marks. Yeah. Uneven marks on yeah. the uh, on the prints. Yeah. So what would be the cause of that? Okay, I, I can't. I call them rivers, right? So you get rivers. these. So you know you'll be printing out your image, and they'll just be like a river of something down down there. Uh, they're caused by the print head getting hotter than what the paper likes. And again, it comes back to what I'm saying about this this little bit of kit was designed to print onto. Uh, thermal paper, like fax paper. Mm -hmm. It's not really designed to print onto this, as none of them are, right? So any, any of them, and there's loads of models about, none of them were designed to do this job. There are certain things that you have to work with to go, well, this is just a limitation that we're gonna hit with. Actually, the limitation is in the paper, you know, because it, it's just a bit thin. If that was a few microns thicker, it would, it would probably not be so much of a problem. So the rivers, are caused when the print head, obviously the print head is getting hot, cool down, hot, cool down, all the way through this A4 document, right? So here the print head's cold. By the time you get to the middle of the page, the print head's hot, right? So, and it's staying hot because it's been printing for the last 20 seconds and it's gonna be printing for another 20 seconds. So, yeah. so the rivers don't tend to happen in the first half of the page. They happen in the bottom half of the page. I've noticed that. Because, yeah. there's, because there's just residual heat from the print head. So that paper that's hitting, it's already hitting a hot print head. And so when it starts to print this information, the paper starts creasing. And what, where, what the rivers are caused by is the paper actually does that. It just creases up. And so this bit just cracks and it doesn't it doesn't hit the paper because it moves away from the paper because it's creased. So you have to sort of think of it in sort of 3D. If I if I fold this like this, because it's the heat, the heat has hit it. So essentially it's doing something like that. So this isn't touching the paper anymore. So it can't transfer because we've got a crease. And it's the residual heat. I mean you can see how sensitive it is to marks. That's just my fingers that have done that. So you get a bit of heat in it. So when you compare that, it to heat. Yeah, when you compare that to heat, that's just my fingers that are marking it. Unfortunately, they are, um, they're pretty unavoidable. Uh, one, of the, one of the ways you can do it is give the print head a couple of minutes just to cool down so that you start from a fresh print out. Try not to get too much carbon in your design. If, so if, you've, you know, if I'm printing a solid black square here, right, by the time I get to here, it's not gonna wanna print that solid black square second. But why do I wanna print a solid black square. If you know what yeah. colour it's going to be anyway. Yeah. Why yeah. wouldn't you just print the outline of that and not have to print that in there? You know, I don't think I don't think we need to have all this purple on on the skin all the time. I think that we we can reduce that. You know, I mean tattooing is moving forward and we're pushing the envelope of what's possible. And and, and I think br the brother printer is part of that, you know. But I also think that some of the stuff we're doing we're already doing it the best way it could be done. And and so now, the, these days, certainly, and it's the thing I recommend to everybody, is just put the information on the skin that you need. You don't need all of that. And if you're not printing as much purple, then you're not gonna have the problem anyway, you know, because you're just gonna be printing essentially lines. And, and, and I think it's a better way of working, to be honest with you. So they are a little bit unavoidable, unfortunately. It's just heat versus, versus this, and heat is always gonna win. But I would suggest finding another workaround in your work to stop you putting such solid areas of purple on the skin. So less purple, less problems? Less purple, less problems. Less purple generally in your life, less problems, to be honest <laughs> with you. <laughs> I'm covered in that stuff now. Okay, so there is a feature 
on this printer yep. called Stencil Mode. Yep. So what's that about? What does it do? Okay, so Stencil Mode came about from uh, some talks that I had with brother probably a couple of years ago now. And I was saying, look, you know, people are running into problems with them. I'm, as you can probably work out, I'm pretty tech savvy with this sort of stuff. This is pretty much my world, so I don't struggle with this. But I, I get it that you guys do. I, I've met loads of tattooists who struggle with, com with computers and that, and, and loads of people do. So I started talking to brother about, is there a way that we can we can make a button that they can just turn it into the thing that we need it to be, you know, essentially a, a stencil mode, you know, a stencil printer. So brother very kindly included that in the last firmware update. If you're buying one of these and you want to make sure that stencil mode is enabled and what I'm about to show you is what your printer is going to do, well, buy it from Killer because they get these things out the box, update the firmware, turn stencil mode on for you. You don't have to do anything. We've literally just got this one out of a box and I'm about to print to it. I've done nothing. I've done nothing to the setup. So this is how it will arrive to you. And I think that, honestly, I think that's above and beyond the call of duty mm -hmm. because I wouldn't do it. <laughs> I'd be like, you're on your own. So the one from Killer comes with the brother stencil mode. Oh, mate, we're going to have to go and wash your hands in a bit. We should have worn gloves for this. Um, and it comes with it on, right, which is brilliant. So I'm going to demo this on an iPad because this is my preferred device now. So this is the Brother iPrint and Scan app, and we're connected to the 763, which is the one that I recommend for all tattooists to use. Let's shut the lid. So I'm going to find a piece of artwork, um, something that's normally a little bit problematic for people. So let's do a repeating pattern on a nearly a full A4 sheet. Right? Okay. So this would normally be quite a problematic. It will catch and it will rip the stencil up and, and all of that sort of stuff. So with my printer that I've got from Killer Ink that's already been set up for me that I don't have to worry about, I'm going to get my first piece of paper, take away the little brown sheet, get to the yellow sheet. Now, what's really nice about this is Spirit. Of, we used to have to fold this back and and, and like tear it, it off. Be very Spirit careful. have actually put like a perforated edge on it now for us because so many of us are using it. Um, I tend to do this just because after ten years it's become habit. But they've actually put the perforation in there. <laughs> you can get a nice <laughs> clean cut. I'm not sending this to print. Remember what a soldier. So we put this in. To be fair, I've become a bit of a dab hand at this over the years. But I, even I get it wrong giving out again. I'm going to feed this through a couple of times until I can see the paper coming out the end. Yeah. Like that. Lift the flap up. Lift that a little straighten up. All right. And then I'm going to send this to print. Now, I'm going to print this too light. The lines are a little bit fine. And I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to show you what happens when you get a really faint print. So we're going to set the density to four, right? Deliberately, because I know it won't print properly like this. And I'm going to send it to the printer. So hit print. We've got to wait a couple of minutes just while it rips it. You'll see your data light comes on. So that tells you that your printer's working. Uh, and it's receiving the data. Obviously, it's receiving it over Bluetooth. Works with um, works with a Samsung tablet. I've seen it work with one of them. Works with uh, the Microsoft Surface as well. And off we go. Now listen, you can that it, it, it. That's where there are parallel lines happening. Now, I have rotated this one degree. So it's not catching, but it is still noticing them. All right, so this will be too light. Okay. Now, depending on your preference, you know, it might be that if you're doing very, very pale dot work and you don't want too much purple on the skin, you might think that that's perfectly okay. I think that there's a couple of areas of, of detail in here where I, I might be struggling to see that as a straight line. Do you know what I mean? I might struggle with that. So I'm going to want that a little bit more. One of the things a lot of people will do is go, oh, well, density four is a bit light. I'll go for density five. I'm not going to go for density five. I'm just going to go for density 10 because they're quite fine increments. There's not, there's not a lot of difference between five and six. So if it's a little bit light, then bump it up a little bit. So I'm just going to crank it up and see if we can break the printer. I know a lot of people uh, over the years have asked me, you know, what's the secret and what's the trick? And I've said, oh, I run all mine at 12 volt. To be perfectly honest with you, since Brother put the stencil mode in the printers, you can just run them on the standard power supply now. Um, it, the 
the difference between the two is very negligible. I still run mine at 12 volts only because I'm too stingy to buy the power supplies. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a load of old power supplies knocking about. But I find now, if you're running them in, in stencil mode, um, the standard brother power supply, which let's be honest, is a really good quality power supply. Right, let's just do that again. Lift that up, give that a little, I'm gonna pull that through just a little bit. Just straighten him up, knock that in. And I'm just gonna hit print again. Right, so I've gone from four to 10, right? And there you go. Now it's harder, it's, it's printed much much better, but because as the, if you, if you think about it, this is the orientation of the paper, so this is the top. So with that, that amount of heat going through, in the center of the flowers, which is the bit you could hear, in the middle of the flowers, it's getting a little bit hot. As it goes down, just a couple of times, there's a couple of spots where it's hot. Don't think that's gonna be a big problem for this particular stencil, to be honest with you. Or I can go back in, I can change the density. You know, maybe we can change the density to six from four, maybe go up in increments of two. I've deliberately just gone right four to 10, you know, just. Floor just it, and, so see, just see floor it and see what happens. Yeah, see that you know. So you might get a little bit of this. Personally, I don't think that's a big deal. I can work with that. It's not a, not a real problem. It doesn't have to be absolutely the thing. I can work my way through it. You know, if you really can't, then change your density setting. Give this thing a couple of minutes to cool down and send it again. It's an A4 piece of pattern. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's not bad. Works pretty good. I can print another thing out for you. And there's a lot of black on this, right? There's yeah, big chunks of black, right? Um, so we're gonna go, so we go density six, and we'll just take a look at it. Uh, I'm not gonna send it to print just now. You know, and this is this is more the kind of thing that I print every day. Uh, if it's if it was more realistic than that that I needed, I'd make a realism map over the top of it. Just, that, just to show you that how, how well they work straight out of a box. This hasn't, other than Liam setting it up, I haven't done anything to it. So this is how they'll arrive to you from Killer. Feel, feel and reveal. Um, I don't know, I think that's a pretty decent stencil for off, just off the top of your head. I mean, that's literally, I've done no work on that. I haven't had to do anything with it. Straight off the box. Straight off there. This is literally out the box from Killer. And I'm making stencils in what, five minutes? You know, piece of cake. And they come with a three year warranty. Thank you very much, Paul, for showing us Thanks, how mate. to set up and use the Brother printer, as well as a bit of troubleshooting as well. So that's a bonus. So where can we catch more of you? Uh, well, I guess links will be in the description. So I'm on social media, Instagram, Facebook. I've got a little YouTube show that I do, so you can come on over to YouTube. There's a few more brother videos over there. And that's about it, really. Go check them out. Paul, it has been an absolute pleasure. Thank Thanks, you very mate. much. Now purple you're covered hands. in purple. Yep. Give you a purple wave. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment.